Yes. Welcome everybody. Nice that you're here. We are from my master's. My name is Thomas. I'm the project leader working for the university and I have the pleasure to work with the lovely Amanda and Fran to bring you all the information you need when you come here to Maastricht uh, on one website. And for the rest, um, Amanda and Fran will guide you through the presentation. We also have Frederike from the International Student Help Desk with you, also from the university, and Anik from Zoid. So when you have any questions, please drop them in the chat or ideally even in the Q&A function from Zoid, uh, from uh, Zoom, <laughs> sorry. And with that, I will uh, give the word to friend Amanda. All right, uh, Amanda, I'll just go first, I guess. So my name is Fran, I'm with my Maastricht, I'm the content coordinator, which means I write a lot of the things that are actually on the website. I'm 21 years old, originally from Argentina, but I grew up in the United Arab Emirates in Dubai. I'm currently doing my bachelor's in European law and I'm in my second year. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy to give you guys all the information that we're about to give you. Hi guys, I'm Amanda. I'm the promotional coordinator for my Maastricht. Um, so I'm the person you mostly speak to on social media. Uh, I'm also a student at UM. I just completed my bachelor's and I love Maastricht so much. I'm doing my master's here as well. So yeah, expert in, well, at least an expert in trying everything you need to know. And now we're trying to give you the secondhand information of what works, what doesn't work. So yeah. So just to give you a little overview of what we're gonna be doing today, we're aiming to give about a 40-ish minute presentation and then accounting for questions and things like this. We're looking about 45 minutes to an hour of this webinar. Um, the whole thing will be recorded and will later be available on Facebook and YouTube. So if you miss our faces, you can go back and see them again. Uh, you can ask your questions through the Q&A function or through the chat, they can either be answered live if they're forwarded to us, if Thomas deems that they need a little bit more explanation by either me or Amanda, or they will be answered in writing by Thomas, Frederic, or Anik. Um, we ask that you only ask general questions, nothing related to your study program. You need to get in contact with the university tees for those. Um, no COVID info either, because again, that's all more related to the university. So we're here for general questions about Maastricht, living in Maastricht, things like this. Just to cover, um, just a general idea of what we're gonna cover so you know what's coming. Uh, it'll be a rundown about why Maastricht is a great city, first and foremost. And then we'll also cover the adulting things like your housing essentials, what happens in terms of banking accounts, transport, and then just some tips on how to actually settle here. So the information you need once you're here and how to explore the city in general, so. Looking forward to that. And again, please navigate to the Q&A function so that uh, Thomas, Frederic, and Nick can focus on one area so it's not so split up. Yeah, and we already got a question actually about COVID. Regulations are currently changing as everywhere in the world. Situations changing. We all hope that it will get better soon. So um, we cannot really say much about this. We would really recommend to contact university directly. Um, and just hope that it in the next month will improve that much that we all can live a relatively normal life from uh, August with the new academic year here again. Mm. I think with COVID, I would like to say, if you have any questions about what it's like to live in Maastricht with COVID, how it is at the moment, we can answer those. It's more like the specific regulations regarding COVID, that's not our you know, field, you know? But if you want to know what, what it's like to be here with COVID, then that's also fine. Questions are not off limit. Um, okay, so what is my mastery.nl? So we're your one-stop information platform to help new students, newcomers find their feet in the city. So we provide information on basically anything from applying for um, financial subsidies from the government to finding the best drinks in town. Um, we are also here with Frederic from the ISH. They're sort of we work very closely together. They're kind of also there to do the same thing we do. They just go a little bit more in depth and help with more specific cases. So Frederic is also a great source of information. 
Um, my Master of in L was created for students by students and we're pr proudly supported by Masters University, Zoid University of Applied Sciences and the Jimente Maastricht, which is basically the Maastricht municipality. So this is our website. This is where most of our information and is and it's always through here this is your homepage that you would find and just to give you a snippet of what there is there's everything we speak about now it's extensively explained on our website so you can see here um, you have finances you have um, health you have thanks for pointing <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, you have housing, so we have a lot of information. We also have exploring the city, such as our city map, which you find with that icon that Fran is proudly giving <laughs> you there. So definitely check out our website after this, because a lot of the information that we're doing here is fully extensively covered there. Mm, can't find it. Okay. Um, okay, so why come to Maastricht in the first place? One of the reasons that we would say is that Maastricht is a super diverse and international city. So it's 120,000 inhabitants, not too big, but also not too small. 20,000 of these inhabitants are actually students. So there is a huge population, inhabitants. Uh, <laughs> there's a huge student population. It really truly is a university city. Um, it's in the center of Europe, so there's great connections to the rest of Europe to travel, airports, obviously with COVID, eh, you know, the situation is, mm. but um, it's it's really genuinely an international city. I mean, personally, I, I grew up in a very international environment coming to Maastricht, like internationality was a big concern for me and I was not disappointed. It does not let down in that sense at all. Um, so yeah, definitely a big reason. Um, now to give you a little bit of an overview of both universities, so Masters University and Zoid. Uh, Masters University, again, known for how international it is, uh, really like sort of diverse university. Um, most programs are actually taught in English and they have this system of problem-based learning, which is a very interactive system where you're supposed to work together with your classmates, argue, discuss, um, I study law, so this is a huge thing for us, especially because we're supposed to like engage in legal discussion and it really is a very constructive way of learning and it kind of helps you apply what you're doing um, every day in your tutorials. Yeah, and then with SOID, they are, I'd say, like a smaller scale to Maastricht University, but they still offer really good programs in English and master's, uh, bachelor's and master's program as well. And they also apply PBL. And again, like you get to meet people from both sides of the universities, at least for me, I've met people from Zoid. Um, so it's really nice that you have two universities to choose for. So we recommend checking out what bachelor programs each university has, see which one is best suited for you and you no doubt still love it here. Oh, we, we should mention both Amanda and I are at UM. Um, yeah. So that's, I think that's where it comes from. We still know people from Zoid. Um, it's not like it's complete separation between two yeah. universities. The whole city is very integrated. Um, so yeah, it's a great environment. Okay, my favorite topic in the world uh, is cycling, which I do not enjoy. <laughs> However, if I could choose a country to cycle in, it's the Netherlands. It's super bike friendly, uh, Maastricht as well. You've got your designated cycle lane, so it's very safe. And yeah, cyclists are always in the right here. So you don't need to worry too much about that. You can go on our website and we also list in our transport section, how to acquire a bike, the different methods in terms of either renting or buying a bike and just safety um, rules in general when it comes to bikes. Also Maastricht is not as big as like, I don't know, I came from Dublin, so really big country, uh, city. It's not as big. So we'd usually say you can get around within 10 to 20 minutes anywhere in terms of faculties and just like the city center. In terms of public transport, so your buses, your trains within the Netherlands, we always recommend getting an OVA chip card. There's information about this on our website, but the chip card, basically you can load money onto it and it's cheaper than to pay for the bus or the train as opposed to paying with your bank card or with cash. I would say overall that like infrastructure when it comes to transport is great. So traveling around the Netherlands, 
um, is super streamlined and easy. Within Mastery, if you can use the buses, especially if you're in one of the further campuses, uh, depending on where you live in the city. Um, or if yeah, it's raining overall. in mm -hmm. May. Or if it's raining, hailing in May. Um, and it's relatively affordable as well, especially if you get a Novi chip card. So definitely read up on that on the website. Um, community and lifestyle. I'm sure a lot of you will be interested in this. So Maastricht is kind of known for its bar scene. It's definitely not like, don't come here expecting like Amsterdam clubbing yeah. scene style. No, it's a lot more like small scale, but still like a lot of things to do, a lot of great restaurants, um, really like nice and diverse music and cultural scene as well. There's a lot of different groups, comedy nights, poetry nights, um, jazz nights, I believe is like, there's, there's a little there's bit of everything. Always, you yeah, do. especially for the scale of Maastricht, you'd be so surprised what you find here. It's still yeah. to this day. Yeah, there, there's a really like artsy kind of underground scene going on as well, if you're into that. Um, so you can find out about this stuff on our sports and community page. So sports is a different thing, right? So sports teams and athletics, if that's your thing, there's a bunch of different um, fraternities and sororities. A lot of them are dedicated to sports and there are just natural, like um, not natural, like private teams as well. If you're into more like the arts and communities and, and social activities then check out our community page there's a huge list of organizations on there um, that you might be interested in you can start checking out the different options when it comes to you know building a life outside of school and hobbies and things like this um, there's also the the um sports complex it's called um sport there's a huge range of activities on offer there so you can also go check that out it's all on the website under our sports section um, yeah Okay, one that. quick in-between question, because we got something on the biking. Mm. Are there specialized shops where they sell student bikes for a cheap price, or is there a place where we can rent a bike? Yeah, so for like uh, buying a bike, yeah, it ranges between getting, there's like the student bike shop. They have cheaper prices compared to like your professional ones and we list this on our website as well and then you can also rent a bike like for example swept feeds um, a lot of students do that sometimes in terms of not wanting to repair their bikes it's easier for them then to rent it uh, so there's both options and uh, facebook as well like mark plots you can also buy even cheaper bikes i would just be wary of buying a stolen bike mm. but we uh, did, yeah info on the website sorry <laughs> so, yeah <laughs> i was gonna say like the, the bike market here is so huge and students come and go from the city all the time so definitely look for a secondhand bike it's a lot cheaper it's better for the environment you can get really great stuff in all sorts of price ranges and basically anything you're looking for you will be able to find secondhand um facebook great source of information for this um but all the options for where to find a bike are on the website and to those who don't know what swap feeds is it's like a subscription model for a bike which is very popular here in the netherlands but uh, spreading through europe you pay monthly rate but therefore you don't have to pay for your repairs you can call them and they bring you a new one or repair it for free so buy a option especially for shorter stay um, students yeah. or if you're like me who has had her bike in the garage for two and a half years <laughs> because i didn't want to fix my flat tire swap feeds might be the one for you <laughs> I fixed it though. Um, yeah, and also in terms of, yeah. Yeah, because we talked about sports, we have another question, and that's uh, somebody asked if he can play ultimate frisbee once they get to UM. Actually, yes, there is a, a actual group dedicated to ultimate frisbee. Um, again, information is on the website. I think it's called Ultima, Ultimas, or something like this. Um, yeah, Ultimas, like Maastricht, very, very smart. But yeah, definitely check it out on the website. Uh, there is a group for you. Anna's been working very hard with the sports and community. <laughs> so I think that by now she knows everything available. <laughs> um, just another thing about Maastricht is the city itself. And we thought we'd recommend a few places in case you want to come visit when things are visitable. If that's a word <laughs> when you can visit everything a bit more freely and you can get around um some of my favorite places i think would be saint peter which you can actually see in this bottom photo there it's a lovely hill 
Um, I say hill because it's pretty flat here in the Netherlands, but this is one of the highest points and it's really beautiful. You can see the city view. And um, for me, another place would be the one in the picture as well, which is Marina Tempasson, mainly because it's near two cinemas and I get to choose. So I really like it there. In our city map, we also recommend a few scenic spots and we actually just produced a blog, Southwest Plug, on a few scenic spots. And we've also included some trails for you to walk. So you can check that out if you're ever in Maastricht. You can also text us. We can recommend some places for you to check out as well. Okay, big topic, housing. Um, so if you are looking to come to Maastricht and if you will start school in September, we recommend that you start looking around April. There is a housing crisis in the Netherlands, unfortunately, which means that it is in huge demand and all the best things will obviously go first and they will go fast. So imagine there are like thousands of students coming to the city every year. While there are also students that are leaving, you want to get started as soon as possible when you're looking. Yeah. So we give a lot of information about this on the website itself, not just about the different options of where to look, but what to look for, what's legal, what isn't. Um, scamming is a little bit of an issue or has been a little bit of an issue in Maastricht. It's definitely improving with time, um, but it's something that you need to be aware of. So we list a lot of different um, sources of information that you can check out um, to avoid basically all the mishaps that come with moving to a new place. Maybe you can't even come to Maastricht before to see the apartment or the studio or the room or whatever. Um, so yeah, definitely go read up on that. But just to give you a little bit of an overview of where you can start looking for um, housing options. So the first thing is Maastricht housing. Uh, maybe you've heard of this, maybe you haven't. This is the official university housing agency. So it's both UM and Zoid. Um, they do charge a 35 euro fee for you to sign up, but it is a one-time only fee and it gives you access to a lot of properties, all of which are legitimate and you are guaranteed not to be scammed. They also have to follow certain regulations for safety and for students to live there, such as like fire safety. Um, and it's also one of like the only way to access the UM guest house, which is the university student dorms. Um, yeah, basically it's just a huge complex of student dorms. So if you're looking for the, the, the dorm life, that's how you get it. Um, you can also access social housing through Maastricht Housing and these are subsidized organizations. So they're funded partly by the government and that means that they're not for profit, they have good practices and they have more affordable prices for students. So those are Wunpunt Servatius and Mass Valley. So remember those names, they're also on the website. Um, and that is definitely a good starting place if you're willing to pay the 35 euro fee. Um, it's also maybe an advantage if you're looking to stay in Maastricht for like three years for your bachelor's because the way Maastricht housing works is with a listing system. So the longer you're subscribed, the more priority you have when it comes to certain properties. So you get really great studios, for example, but only people that will be signed up to Maastricht housing for like three years will actually be able to get them, unfortunately, because of this list system. So the earlier you sign up, the better. If you know you're coming to Maastricht for sure and you know you're staying here for a while, might be worth it. Um, sign just up consider now. it. Huh? I was like, sign up now. Sign up now. Yeah, we're, we're not like you know, we're not trying to push it on to you or whatever, but it is the safest thing technically in the city. So then I spoke about the social housing corporations, Masole, Servatius, and Wunpunt. Um, like I said, these guys are subsidized by the government, good practices, really nice um, properties from them, and they have decent prices for students. So definitely also check those out, but mostly you will be able to access them through master housing. Um, then you have private landlords, which can be found through websites like Facebook, there's Pararius, there's Cameronet. This is where we start getting into scam territory. So it gets a little bit murkier. You have to be careful. Um, you can rent through an agency, which is within the private sphere, probably the best idea because then at least you're usually guaranteed that the property exists. If you are renting from a private landlord, absolutely make sure that you are at least, if you're not able to come to Maastricht to see the property, at least get a video or get a live viewing. Now with COVID especially, this is like a lot of agencies are doing a great job at this where they'll give live viewings 
um, for you over Zoom or something. So definitely, definitely ask for that. It's completely okay. Um, and yeah, Facebook, again, on the website, we list a, different, a bunch of different pages, but you can find housing on there as well. There's definitely options. Please, please, please be careful. Scamming has happened. And yeah, it's just a terrible thing for students, especially if you're not able to come to mastery beforehand. Um, Maybe, um, quickly in between, um, we will also soon publish uh, more tips on avoiding to be scammed. So um, this is a lot of information now in housing. As Fran said, we do have a lot of information on our website on this topic. So we really recommend to check out the section and go through it. Um, and then also look at the tips on how to avoid being scammed because there are some clear indications when it's a bit fishy. If you're aware of them, it will really help you in, the, in your finding process. Yeah. Our social media is at the bottom there. So you can follow us and I'll be posting some tips actually from next week on about how this all happens. So kind of guide you through it as well. I think also relevant to scamming, it's really important to bring up her team Zoid Limburg. Their logo is at the bottom left on the slide. Um, if you just search up like Google her team Zoid Limburg, um, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. But they're basically a not-for-profit university related agency. They're they're also like we work very closely with them and they're there to help you if you have any issues with housing. You can like send them your contract, for example, to check that everything is legal, um, ask them for advice. If you do get scammed, you can always go to them and they might help you get some money back. Um, their contact information will be included at the end of the presentation, but keep them in mind. Um, and just to finish with the different options, there are other options that are neither master housing or whatever. And these are Zior. This is a big, big company. Uh, it is private, but they do offer student housing. So it's very similar, kind of like dorm style um, living, I guess. Um, at least the, the building, the Zior building that I've been to is really nice, really huge. They have pretty nice studios. A little, it is a little bit on the pricier side. And there have been some concerns with like hidden costs. So definitely read the, the fine print if you are looking to rent from them, but also an option. There's a student hotel, which is what the name says, a hotel for students. Also on the pricier side, but really, really nice. And obviously students live there, so very social environment. Then there's the Stay Okay, which is our very own little hostel for short-term solutions, especially is what we recommend. So you can always stay there for a little bit if you're looking to find a place um, but you've already gotten to Maastricht. So, yes. I don't know if Amanda, you have anything else to add that I might have forgotten when it comes to housing, but. No, you covered it. Thomas? Yeah, I think we've got a couple of questions to where also specifically about a student hotel, if you have any experience or can recommend it. I stayed there because I did not know about my Maastricht. So I came here with no housing. <laughs> Um, so I stayed there for a short-term solution. Uh, obviously, I stayed this as a guest, but I did see that a lot of students there have like a lot of interaction with each other. They have activities organized, but I think the like the hotel itself. So you really get to be in like a community. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it is on the pricier side. So if you're on a budget, I don't recommend. You can still get this in a cheaper like. Um, housing, but still really nice, great mm -hmm. fancy building, lots to do. Yeah. Yeah, I have a friend who stayed there. She made a lot of friends. I think they give you a bike as well. Yes. It's nice. They do. Um, yeah. But yeah, definitely you can get cheaper things and also like your own maybe private place if you're lucky for cheaper than what you're paying at a student hotel. If you're lucky, start looking early. <laughs> Sure. Um, now is, I think, a good time. Um, there are a couple of more questions on the topic of housing. So, for example, that somebody has seen uh, on Facebook that all the people want uh, them to move in already in June. Does that mean that if you want to get to Maastricht in the middle of August, that they have to pay the month or two worth of rent already now? Um, I would say, it's, yeah, unfortunately. Um, I mean, usually contracts go for like 12 months, so they run for 12 months. So if you start paying around June, then that means that you will be done. So in the end, it kind of ends up being the same. But yeah, a lot of the time it's better to lock in on a place if it's a good place 
and maybe pay an extra month or so. Because if you don't and you leave it until later and you don't find anything, then you're just going to end up paying more for more expensive accommodation, usually. I don't know, Amanda. That That's my experience, at least. That's what yeah. I would recommend. But I, I mean... Also- a lot of people move out in, in mid-June, so of course they want immediately to find someone who comes after them. Um, but there will also be options that are available from 1st of August or even later or mid-July. So yeah. it's a little bit of a gamble, I would say. Um, exactly. You do not have to take on something, but often also good places might be a bit cheaper in a structural way, but therefore you have to commit to them earlier. Yeah. I mean, I would play it on the safe side if you have to pay an extra month, but it's a really good place. I would lock in on it because it gets harder. So I know this. the slide says April. I just realized we're already in late May. Uh, but <laughs> um, I mean, if you're looking now and you find something good now, it starts in June. I don't know. I remember last year when I was looking for a place and I had to like kind of end up not ticking all my boxes because I didn't lock in on a place earlier on. Again, you have to be lucky. It really depends on the circumstances, but I don't know, might be a good yeah. idea. Yeah, we also got two questions about shared housing. So some people are interested to um, live in shared housing. How would you approach this best? Uh, can you uh, rent an apartment and then find your own housemates or how could you go through the process of finding shared housing? We do, I get a lot of questions like this from a lot of people. So I know um, I can go Fran. Um, some people try to look for like a house, like a student house together. Um, for this, I usually say like Facebook may be your best bet in terms of like saying, hey, this is us, we're looking for a house because a lot of people then are moving out as a group and they're looking for people. Or you can try with like the agencies. You can all go together and say, we're looking for a house like this. But the agencies might be slightly more expensive. Um, but yeah, you can, I also, sorry, just saw the rented, I think I understood that one. Like if you rent with someone or if you just have someone staying with you. you yeah, it's about, I think it's about renting with others, but how it works often there is that then the agency wants mm. one person to be the main tenant yeah. and not always, of course, it depends on the size. Then you have to settle your co-tenants under a dedicated contract. Um, but it is possible uh, some also houses or apartments are, are set up that way and that somebody will be the main tenant and then and they, the room is shared with others. So uh, but usually we would recommend finding something easier for uh, depending from how far away you come for the first couple of months. And then there are possibilities to move somewhere else or find something different because you also meet new people. Um, mm-hmm. That's how it very often at least goes. Yeah, I think also a good option there is checking because sometimes you have, for example, um, under private websites like Perarius is one of them, you'll see like one house that is being rented room by room. But there, there might be like three separate rooms that are being rented separately in one house. So if you have a friend with you, you can maybe rent two rooms separately, one for each other, like one for each, but in the same building, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So then you might be sharing with one or two more people, but at least you're with the person you want to be with, if that's what you're looking for. If you're looking for roommates that you don't know, then Facebook is a good one. Master Housing is also a good one. Um, and again, private landlords offer often offer rooms as well. You'll share a kitchen and maybe bathrooms with the people in the house, in the building. But yeah, I would say house sharing is the more common thing to do here, right? So a lot of options. Yeah. Um, we also got a question about average price. What price for room is reasonable? For example, for a 15 square meter room with common areas. I would say we have, so we have a little breakdown of like monthly expenses and everything later on, but I would say you're looking probably at around 450. Really depends. Uh, like on average, we say 450. Prices can range cheapest 
300. I have seen things for around 250 if you're really lucky, but that's for smaller rooms as well. Also, depending on location, if you're in the city center, you're obviously looking at expensive -er places. Um, prices can go all the way up to like 800, 700 for a private studio, but on average, 450, I would say, is a good benchmark um, for student housing, right? Yeah. No, that's pretty good. And then if you're looking more at studios, like private rooms, then yeah, five, like Fran did. You can go as far as 800 as well. Yeah. Um, but also that, really yeah. depends when you start looking. So if you start earlier, you'll find cheaper things as well. Yeah. It really helps to start early. Yeah. But I think now we can look at locations, just to link with housing as well. Yes. Um, so we kind of broke down um, the most important neighborhoods, like student neighborhoods, at least most popular ones. And also I'll just explain here in terms of like what faculty is what. Um, so on the, with Fran being my pointer person, thank you. So if you're on the West side, um, first and foremost, we always recommend when you're looking for housing, look at where your faculty is. Um, it just makes your life easier. Don't be going 20 minute cycle every morning like if you can avoid that I would stay on the same side of the river as your faculty so on the west side my left we have most of the UM faculties and also we have the main Zoet faculty for especially I think with um, IB uh, uh, thank you Brad and Fran is pointing there at Zoet um, so yeah, Brussels Sport, and it's closest to that area, and there's a big um, supermarket there for both Albertine and Yumbo, which are the main like supermarkets that side. So for Soy students, this would be one of the more popular areas. If you're looking at UM, it's more kind of closer to the inner city. Thanks, friend. <laughs> so like SBE Law, you'd be on this side. <laughs> like Maria, yeah, she's pointing very well for you. Um, and then on the other side, I would say this is Zoid you have closer to the WIC area. Uh, and then for the UM faculties of FSC, which is Faculty of Science Engineering. So like for myself, I study data science. So that's where my faculty is. Um, FHML, which is Health Sciences, and also for FPN, which is Psycho... Psycho Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so used to saying FPN. <laughs> um, so then you're closer to the Randvik area. So we'd recommend looking at houses around Randvik or Wick or Skanavik. It just makes your life a lot easier. Within these neighborhoods that we've highlighted, you'd be close to either like your um, supermarkets and also to the city. And also you're in the community where most students are. So you kind of have like your community surrounding you. Uh, again, always just look at our map, which is on our website, and you can pinpoint what other activities are around you. And we really recommend doing that when you move here. Just go explore. Uh, it's called go explore the section. Sorry, just go explore like what uh, shops you have, what um, banks are nearest to you, and everything like that. You can see on our map. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I left any other areas. Wait have another question on this topic and that's what neighborhoods should we stay away from in terms of safety and crime rate oh uh, well you're coming to maastricht so it means that basically no neighborhood is off limits the biggest thing you risk is to get your bike stolen in the city thankfully yeah. i mean um, have yeah. your wits about you don't think this is like safe so i'm just gonna not be on guard like have your wits about you of course but if you're chances are you're nearest to like one of the faculties then you're fine yeah maybe i, I think the outskirts are a bit murky in terms of i don't know what lies there but still safe yeah it's a relative very a quite safe city uh, but of course don't leave uh, your windows open if you're living on the ground floor during the day i mean that uh, Exactly. And always lock your bike, but for the rest, I can only agree with a man and friend of this. Yeah, common sense to go. But I mean, in the set, in the in terms of neighborhoods, there's no like, there's no sketchy ah. neighborhood, you know, that you wouldn't go to. Definitely not any, not in the area that's shown on this map. I would say, 
Um, so yeah, just, and usually the offerings that are listed, you know, you can tell, like if you can tell if it's for students, then that means that it will be in a neighborhood that students often, you know, go to. So I would say just, yeah, have your wits about you, but nothing to be truly scared of. Of course, we were just talking about safety and bikes. Uh, someone is asking, is there a big risk to get the bike stolen if you lock it outside in the city center? If you have a good lock, then you should be fine. I lost my first bike in the first two hours of owning it, but I had a really like plastic lock. Mm. Usually they say if you bought a really cheap bike, get a, like your lock will be more expensive than your bike. Um, also make sure that you park or your bike correctly because yeah. it's also very likely that or possible that you put your bike against a tree or somewhere uh, and then it is gone the next day but it was not stolen it was taken away by the municipality because you parked it wrongly yeah. and usually if you put it somewhere outside if it's a light popular space the option that it gets stolen is way little less also at night if there's a light on it then people will rather not steal it than if it's in a very dark corner with corner with a very bad lock mm. we have a map on our transport section that shows where you can park your park your bike in the city center um all the different places so that the municipality does not take it away because that is a big hassle to get it back so yes um if that's it for the neighborhoods then maybe we can move on thomas or are there any more questions the other questions i will answer a bit later or forward a bit later in the presentation all right so this is what we were talking about before um jobs living expenses generally so your monthly living living expenses you are looking at like we said for rent average 450 for a student room prices can go for as cheap as 350 all the way up to 700 and of course more but that's just a a range where we believe that most places will fall. Um, monthly expenses, we recommend that you budget for around 300 to 400 euros a month on living expenses outside of rent. So this obviously depends on your lifestyle, the kind of things you're doing, how you're eating, what you're eating, if you're going out, all these things. But just to give you a small estimate, so the university itself actually recommends that you budget around 180 a month for groceries um and just to give you an example a one-year gym membership is 20 euros per month so i think a good idea for a lot of you might be because i i do think that a lot of students are a little bit surprised at how expensive master can be in certain things so if you go on like albertheim ah.com or yumbo.com or yumbo.nl i believe it's on the website somewhere um, you can actually see sorry i was just like like the main supermarkets this other yeah so these are sorry these are the main supermarkets where most students tend to go and you can actually see what things cost online on their websites and i think this is a good idea like a good way to get an idea of how much you can budget for a month in terms of groceries which is probably going to be your biggest expense outside of rent then there's obviously textbooks to take account of um and when it comes to like eating out i think a lot of popular student spots you can get food for as cheap as like four euro for a meal, but obviously you can go all the way up to like 10, 12. If you go to a bar, a drink might cost you around eight euro, but also it can go up. Really depends on where you go. Um, but yes, just to get a, a small idea of little things that you could be spending on on the daily. Um, when it comes to jobs, we uh, first start to, by saying that we don't recommend you get a job as soon as you come here, if possible. We tell students to wait for like two or three months, get settled in the city because there are a lot of administrative things to take care of. You have to like settle into a new routine, get a, get used to your university style. Um, PBL is a very different way of learning for a lot of people. What we were talking about before, problem-based learning. Master's University especially, I can't speak for Zoid because I don't know how it works specifically there. Master's University definitely has a very unique teaching style and it's a lot of self-learning, a lot of discipline. And so that takes a little bit of getting used to for a lot of students. Um, so that's why we recommend that you don't overload your schedule as soon as you get here by getting a job on top of everything. You wait for a few months. Um, but after that, student jobs are plentiful and there is usually no Dutch requirements obviously like you have exceptions and some jobs will necessarily need Dutch but uh, a lot of students do have jobs it's not hard um, 
and it is a student city. So a lot of establishments actually, actually do cater to, you know, students mm -hmm. looking for jobs. So you can also check the UM Vacancy Board, um, just Google UM Vacancy Board and job listings will come up there as well. I don't know, Amanda, if you have anything to add? No, just that it is possible to study and um, work. But again, to reiterate, settle in first before you load yourself with a very full schedule. Yeah, definitely. Um, Thomas, do we have any questions or should we move on? Um, I think you summarized the question on work very well and the other questions I will pick up in a bit uh, because we will still take it on this topic. Okay. Okay, in terms of things you need to definitely be on the lookout when it comes to moving here and the first set of things that you need to organize um, just side note, pretty soon we'll be publishing as well, like top seven or top 10 things you need to know before you move to Maastricht. And these are some of the essential things. So one of the most important things that we stress is to check your health insurance validity. We can't stress this enough. It's a very, it can be a confusing topic, but we hope that we have extensively explained it for you. Each situation is different, so we recommend that you go on our website and you have a look whether you need to have health insurance before you move here, um, because it can cause problems for you once you've come. The next thing after that that we recommend is to get a Digi ID. I always suck at explaining this because it's such a weird concept, but basically your Digi ID is linked to your um, citizen service number, so to say. So once you're registered here with the municipality, you can get a digi, digi ID. And this really helps you with a lot of things such as your finances or even your health insurance. It just, I guess, digitalizes things a lot more easier. So you can apply for subsidies using your Digi ID and it's really more streamlined than if you did it manually without one. Um, I think at this stage, some things aren't even possible without your Digi ID. So we always recommend you do that. Um, again, to stress, once you arrive, register with the municipality as well. And then once you've, you know, gotten to meet other people in uni and everything like that, we also recommend that you check out your neighborhood just to stress already the city map. You can check all the locations that we've mentioned for the scenic routes, but also activities around you. You can see from our sports and community um, sections, and there might be some things that are outside of the university that you can also take part in. Um, so we really like would say immerse yourself in life here in Maastricht yeah. because it has so much to offer and we just want to make sure that you guys experience it to the fullest. Yeah, I just wanted to add about the city map that I think we'd never mentioned that it's actually been sort of curated by students. So we at some point asked a lot of students to send in their best recommendations for like cheap spots to eat at with great food, best places to get drinks, things like thrift stores, sustainable shopping, things like this. And it was all then like compiled onto this map. And it's got great, like we recently updated updated it. So now we have like a lot of different features where you can select what you want to see. We recently added swimming spots in Maastricht. So if you come here during summer, you can actually find where to go swimming on the map. So it's got a lot of great recommendations, scenic spots as well. Um, mm -hmm. So definitely check it out. It's not like an old Google Maps thing. No, it's, it's a little Google bit more archive. Yeah, but um, it's really, I just saw the question on student life, like, Again, just to stress, such an international city. Uh, I've never been so happy that I moved here. I met so many people from different walks of the earth and there's always something happening. You kind of forget like the city is not like just students because you're just always around like student activities and student vibes. So yeah. wouldn't recommend like any other place. I can only uh, confirm that I'm here already nine and a half years and I still like it. Um, but definitely get your administration and your settling things first out of the way. That will save you a lot of trouble. Coming back to two things we just talked about, maybe because I was a bit too quick with the job slide first. What is an average wage that people can expect when working here? So this depends on A, your age. 
because here in the Netherlands, they do um, pay you by age. So let's say you're like 18. Unfortunately, you're earning about five euros an hour almost compared to someone who would be 23, um, 21 and above, I think, would be earning around 10, 11 euros. But this also may depend with your employer. Maybe they pay you more. But usually most of the jobs are, go with the metric of going by your age. And then obviously also depends how much you work in terms of are you working 20 hours a week or just four hours a week? Some we're talking, days. Are we talking netto here, of course. So oh, yeah. maybe in line with this, also the question, what kind of subsidies do exist here in Maastricht or in the Netherlands in general? Um, okay, so subsidies... It's a huge topic. It's very well described on the website. So definitely recommend you go check those out there. But you can get subsidies for um, your studies, first of all. So you can um, apply. There's a few requirements, but you can apply for a tuition fee subsidy if you fulfill these requirements. Um, and even maybe for a loan from the government if you also fulfill certain requirements. I have to keep specifying because a lot of people, unfortunately, are not eligible. It's all on the website. It's called study, fi study finance, study financiering in Dutch. Uh, my Dutch is not, not great. You can also get a housing subsidy. Again, a couple of requirements. You usually have to be older than 23. It's called Hortuslag on the website. You can get um, a health insurance subsidy. So if you work in the Netherlands, you will have to take out Dutch health insurance. Otherwise, you are technically not allowed to get Dutch health insurance. So it's only if you, again, fulfill certain requirements. If you do get this insurance, then you can get Zork to Sag, which is the health insurance subsidy, again, on the website. And what else am I forgetting? Am I forgetting one, guys? Oh, quite, those, no. quite tell me about <laughs> Those are the main ones. And those are the main ones. Yeah. yeah, it's a bit complex, especially like you with Zork to Sag, the health insurance one. But yeah, we break it down for you. And then when the time is right, we usually like do a few um recommendations on how to get these subsidies. I'll share something on social media as well, just mm -hmm. to break it down, but it's really well explained with guidance documents yes. <laughs> on our website. So it's a step-by-step -step on how to apply for these things and how to check if you're eligible and whatnot. And uh, yeah, certain things like Zorg Tuslag, for example, for the health insurance will mostly only be relevant at a bit late at time. We to start mm -hmm. for the rent might already from the beginning but we recommend focusing these are the top three things you should do before or right after arrival and then apply for the DJD so that you have the, uh, the eligibility for all the subsidies we yeah. will give more presentation during the intro days of um and maybe also Zeit. so there we will also go more in detail on uh, the exact steps that you should take in the first weeks and month after your arrival so if you have the chance, uh, we are very happy to see you there again in August or September. A couple of more questions. Um, one about or two about registration. Um, how many people can get registered at the municipality within one, one apartment or place of living? And then can you only get registered while already living in Maastricht? Um, yes. So. In terms of how many people can be registered in an apartment, it really depends on, you know, the, the owner of the apartment who you're renting it from. They will, I don't know if I'm understanding the question correctly, Thomas, but say you live in, you're, you're renting out a studio that's supposed to only be for one person, but you are two people in there. You are sort of stepping into shady legal territory there and you might get in trouble. So definitely abide by the rules and regulations of your landlord, whoever they may be. Mm -hmm. um, and you know the municipality like it is incredible to me how well everything is connected within the municipality and their database so they do check yeah they do check you might not be able to get away with doing certain you know illegal things um how long you can be a master before registering they recommend that you do it within seven days of your arrival but you only need to register if you're staying here for less than four months so you can wait for a little bit longer, I would say. It's not an issue. I think it took me a little bit longer to register and it was fine. Um, and I you can think, do it online. Yeah, yes. I think now but, because it's online, you can register beforehand. So before coming here, mm -hmm. I'm not entirely sure the exact period of how far in advance. Do you know, Thomas? 
Now you can um, register, but as Fran already said, you don't have to for four months. Though mm -hmm. if you're planning to do a master or bachelor program here, we do recommend doing it way shorter than four months. So mm -hmm. if you have a registering address, so you already signed a contract in some sense, or know it for sure, then you can actually also register before coming here, but there will also be registration sessions. So usually this is the ideal moment for registration with the municipality and afterwards applying for, for example, the ditch ID. And this will happen in the first week after income. So mostly end of August, beginning of September. But I would personally recommend now that it is online, register online because the municipality will ask you to present yourself in person at the municipality with certain documents. So if you register in advance, again, you will have to have a signed contract with a, for a rental, like for a living accommodation. But if you do register in advance, then you'll be able to basically get the list of documents you need from the municipality, which you can get obviously beforehand as well. But then you can also book an appointment. And then as soon as you get to Maastricht, you're fully registered with the municipality, you get your BSN, your burger service number, which you can then use to get your DigiD and you have nothing else to worry about and you can go out and have fun and everything. The longer you leave it for, the less likely, likely you are to do it. If you're anything like me, it took me ages before I knew how everything worked. So yeah, I would recommend you just get it off your back as quickly as possible and just get it over with. We have Definitely another question. Off. On registration, that's what do I need to do when I move from another Dutch municipality to Maastricht as an international student? Ooh, so you we have a... Yeah. Right? No, no, you go, you go. I've spoken, I've spoken a lot. Go. No, 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 go ahead. We... <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have a whole guidance document dedicated to this. You can go on the website, check it out, but basically you need to deregister at the municipality you're currently at and you need to register your new address at the Maastricht municipality. Super easy process. You can do it online and it's all detailed step by step in the guidance document at the bottom of our page of registering your address, basically. Yeah. It's in your housing section. And likewise, if you move within houses in the Netherlands, you usually have to register your new address as well. I mean, within Maastricht, you also yeah. register your new house address. So you get all your bills and yes. your red address. We have one more question for now, and the other ones I think I will pick up at the end, and that is regarding finances. Do we have to open a bank account? In this case, if we are from, I think, the UAE. UAE? Yeah, but then I guess it's only said UAE, or may, it might also be EU. That yeah. might, or that might <laughs> be an option, and it actually differs then. But maybe you can take a uh, speak a little bit about when it's important to open a bank account and when you recommend it and for which reasons. Amanda, I don't know if you want to go. You can go, Miss UAE. Miss <laughs> UAE. Um, okay, so if you are from the EU, if you're not from the EU, let's say that, and you don't have an SEPA account, um, then we do recommend that you open a Dutch bank account or at least a European bank account, um, even if it is through mobile banking. One thing that I would say is great about opening a Dutch bank account is that you'll get a Maestro card. And a lot of people don't know what these are because they're updated. Like they're basically archaic in most countries, except for the Netherlands and I think Belgium. But it's basically a different, it's like MasterCard, Visa, Maestro. But there are some places in the Netherlands that don't accept anything but Maestro cards. So if you don't have one, or you don't have cash and you won't be able to pay. Albert Heijn, the big supermarket here is a notorious example of this. So, you know, it might be worth it to get this Maestro card. If you do have a European bank account, then a lot of people opt with not opening a Dutch bank account and that's completely okay. You can definitely live without one, but it might solve a problem, like solve a couple of problems for you. I don't know, man, if you have anything to add, but. Yeah, just that I was very stubborn when I moved here and I kept my visa card, but Maestro definitely kept it easier for me. Yeah, you can also pay with Ideal if you have a Dutch bank account, which is a really safe way of paying online. Yeah. If you're online shopping in the Netherlands, especially with COVID, might be a good idea. On the website, it's again listed like pros and cons, so you can read up on that if you want a little more info. I would say coming from outside the EU, definitely open one not coming from outside the EU depends on you. You don't need it to apply for subsidies or anything. You can do that with your oh, European yeah. bank account. Can you then 
briefly explain again what the difference is between a BSN, DigiID, and Ideal. Uh, with between Visa, what? Sorry. No, between BSN, DigiID, and oh. Ideal. So, oh. uh, so your BSN is the Burger. I don't know if I say this right. Burger service number. Yes. It's basically like. In English, I guess, would be your citizen service number. So when you register your address at your municipality, you get a BSN number. And with that is linked to your Digi ID. Your Digi ID is just your digital ID, so to say, and that lets you log in to certain things within the Dutch government, such as, let's say, your taxes, your subsidies like to apply for your subsidies they'll ask you to log in with your digi id and so that just helps you apply for things online if that part is clear and then maestro or ideal 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 is a payment apply, yeah. uh, like it's you like can pay an online payment system there we go an online to your dutch maestro bank account so to speak uh, where you can easier pay online yeah, yeah it basically is linked to your online banking so if i was buying food uh, from a online uh, takeaway i would then go to the end and it would say pay with ideal and this is the only way you can pay for maestro cards at least because they don't technically have a number or a csv number i don't know what that the security number at the back it's been so long since i used a visa or mastercard but they don't have that so you need to pay with ideal yeah. Maybe one question that closes this arriving essential topic very well is when should we come to Maastricht? If you're starting in September, like the first of September, for example, we usually say like two weeks in advance. Um, you get to attend income and you also get to settle in properly. But if let's say your housing is secured, then you can even come earlier, but two weeks would be a good time to settle in before the rush of university starts. Um, and then you can come like a few days beforehand, but you then kind of just rush through everything. You start uni, you start getting to know your neighborhood at the same time. So we'd recommend two weeks, yeah, I would at, say. At least minimum a week, I would say. Yeah. I, yeah. Or I, I would even say like, I don't know, it depends on your housing contract, but if you if university starts mostly around 1st of September, so either the last August uh, week or the 1st September week, and the weeks before it's introduction week and income. And if you want to have at least one or two more weeks even before that, you have time to check out your neighborhood and it will provide you with a calmer feeling about where you are, where everything is, um, if you have the time, I would recommend it, but also what Amanda and Franz says, um, two weeks before the beginning of the semester should also be sufficient. Mm -hmm. um, More about income in a bit, by the way, we're gonna explain what yeah. that is. Maybe now we move on to just wrap up the next slides and then go back to the questions. Um, okay, so just to cover a few essential contacts, um, when it comes to Maastricht University, so if you need a visa, you don't need to do anything. The visa office will actually contact you. Um, but it, if you do have any reason to contact them, their email is on there. If you want to apply for scholarships, you can contact the scholarship office, email on there again. And then the SSC, which is the Student Services Center, is there to answer all your general questions. You can email them. They're super nice. They speak Dutch. They can help you out. For more specific questions, you can also go to the ISH. Um, Frederic is from the ISH, for example, and we will give their contact information at the end of the presentation. But yeah, just take a screenshot of this. And um, if you do have any questions, you can always email them um, when it comes to university things. Likewise for SOID, you also have um, the corresponding department for visas and also for your scholarships. And then in general questions like about your studies, timetables, that sort of thing. Um, that's related to your actual courses, then we recommend you contact study at Zoid Pantanal. Uh, you can take a screenshot of this as well. Screenshot time and moving on. <laughs> uh, all right, last of all, we really recommend, we're not biased at all, but we really recommend that you check out my Maastricht.nl. 
Um, all the information that we just presented, presented and a lot more can actually be found on the website in a lot more detail as well. Um, we highly recommend that you sign up for income. Uh, you can do this at income.nl. Uh, this is basically the introduction week for the universities. There's an info market, which we will be at. You can come see us live and in person and ask us all your questions. But there's also a lot of activities. You can meet people. You can see what the city has to offer in terms of organizations and student associations and sports associations. So it's definitely something worth going to if you want a proper introduction to your life in the Netherlands. Um, we also recommend that you follow us on Instagram, with, through which you can see Amanda, first of all, and also stay up to date with the... Um, hmm? I said sometimes see me. Sometimes. See Amanda, talk to Amanda, see her vicariously through Instagram. Um, yeah. But yeah, we, we will po be posting about further webinars later on in the year. Um, they usually are coordinated with um, the student like path, so to speak. So when you get to Maastricht, we will make a webinar about things you need to do once you're here, um, any questions you might have once you do get here as well. And we just publish general information about life in the city. So definitely follow us. Information is at the bottom of the slide. Yes. Um, we also on uh, like the friends that we also on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook, but on Instagram definitely most active. Um, a couple questions still. Are you mm -hmm. still guys up for it? Yes, what? of course. Just to uh, top up that you can contact us on these lovely outlets. Uh, you can either email us, but we also have a WhatsApp number and that leads to this lovely phone, which you can contact me any time of the day. I may or may not respond any time of the day, but sometimes I'm up at weird hours, so you'd be surprised. Um, either way, I will get to your question. Um, so feel free to contact us there or even on our either on Instagram or on Facebook Messenger as well. And on the right side, you can see we had mentioned earlier the ISH, there is their email. And also for housing queries, specific ones, especially, you can contact info at herteamsoidlimburg.nl. Um, always don't be shy. Like if you're not sure whether your question is for them or not, you can still contact us first. And we'll, if we can't answer it, we'll make sure we find the best person to answer that question for you. Over yeah. to you, Thomas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just uh, going through a couple of main questions we didn't tackle yet. Um, maybe we just talked about income and the intro days. Maybe you can quickly explain again what is the difference and would you recommend income? I like income. I would definitely recommend income. I had a great time there. There's um, a huge organization process that goes into giving students the best experience possible. They organize mentors and they take you around the city and they show you a couple of cool split, like cool places. Um, I don't know how it will be with COVID. When I was there, they did organize parties and things like this, social events. I don't know if that will be the case next, well, next academic year this year um, in August. Um, and then the intro days, Amanda, maybe you can explain those. Yeah, just top up on income. If by some chance you can't make it that week, it's still not the end of the world in terms of being able to integrate into Maastricht life. I missed income, but I joined the next year. And also I it was very easy to make friends in my first year because everyone's in the same boat. Everyone's international. They don't know anyone. So it's still possible. Um, for intro days, just the difference there is that now that is um, organized by your faculties and specifically by your courses. So, for example, your course will then introduce you firstly to how the student like platform would work and things that are intricate to your studies specifically. So not really outside the university like course curriculum. It will be in, within the what you need to know in terms of deadlines, in terms of your binding studies, student, you know, the binding study advice, that's the word. So they tell you all the like bureaucratic things within your um, introduction week. And also you get to meet people in your course. It's not like just bureaucratic stuff. So that's the difference. Yeah. And the ticket to the income, do you know how much it is? I'm not sure anymore though. No, I don't know. Um, you can go on their website, wait, I'll go I think back. It's income.nl, uh, actually. Income. Uh, yes. Yeah. 
It also depends on options if you choose, like including the parties uh, that took uh, place, but on the website yeah. you can find all the information. Mm. We have another question about language accessibility. So um, in the city, at the doctor, how is it? Do you need to learn Dutch? Mm, well, I would say overall, the answer is no. You don't need Dutch to live in Maastricht or in the Netherlands, really. Some Dutch is appreciated if you know how to say hello, thank you, how are you? Obviously, it's super nice if you're going to any new place that speaks a different language. I think it's always nice to make at least a small effort. Everyone does speak English. Um, university courses will be in English. You know, the whole university management handles issues in English as well. Um, you can walk into any shop and just use English and you will be fine. Um, but Master's University, I'm not sure about Zoid again, Master's University does offer um, free Dutch courses for first year students. So you can also check that out. Um, but I would say overall, the answer is no, you do not need Dutch. Exactly, yeah, I would sort of totally agree, especially for the first month, you don't need it, but as Francis, it is highly appreciated and open, can open a lot of doors and uh, yeah. Um, we have another uh, question. If you guys recommend UM gym or a private gym, if that might be worth it. As a person that has not exercised, <laughs> um, I believe it is, it is cheaper with the UM um, subscription, UM sports. So, and also you're among students, like if that is something that concerns you to be in the right community, then I would recommend UM Sports. Uh, private gyms, again, it's a student city, so you will also be surrounded with some students, but they can be a bit more pricier. Yeah, I, I would say the only thing about the UM Sports complex is that it's far from yeah, the city center. Okay. So it's, yeah, um, I go to a private gym and it's a big one and I would say, a huge chunk of students actually go there so it's not like you're not around students not that it matters because if unless you're going with friends you're usually not really i don't know at least i don't interact uh, maybe i'm not too social i don't know but um yeah i think it definitely is a little bit more pricey and i think um sports also offers classes which some gyms might not so no yeah yeah. pond. if you live close to um sports go to um sports <laughs> Quickly continuing about the Dutch. So the university also offers free Dutch courses. I'm not sure how it is at Zoid, but we also would recommend uh, taking part in them. Please note the Dutch course is only free in your first year of either your bachelor or master's. So do it in your first year, unless you want to pay 200 or something euros. Yeah. Then another topic is parking, where you get two questions. Um, oh, yeah. If you have a car, um, are there parking spaces available at the university and the faculties or in the city in general? Um, yes, we do have a page dedicated to this and we are soon going to release another guidance document because a lot of the times you will need to apply for a parking permit if you're going to keep your car permanently in the city. Um, I would say overall keeping a car in Maastricht in the Netherlands in general, I believe is a little bit pricier than most people will be used to. Um, parking is quite expensive and it is also relatively difficult to get. Driving in Maastricht, I have never driven, but must not be a really smooth experience. There's just so many students cycling around. The streets are super narrow. So we recommend that you usually opt for a bike. If you are bringing a car though, it's obviously possible. Um, you can also sometimes get accommodation that includes a parking spot, but if you don't, then you will have to pay for parking and you may have to apply for a parking permit. So information is on the website about that and we will soon come out with a guidance document showing you how to do it. Yeah. We got a couple of questions about COVID and how uh, life as a student look like under COVID restrictions. I would though say um, it's really difficult. We, we, a lot of things are currently changing. A lot of rules and regulations are being, uh, how do you say that, taken away again? How do you, yeah, yeah or, or easy? Relaxed. Relaxed, yeah. exactly. So um, follow the news, um, there are, very good uh, information online also from the university on this topic. Same about the schedule. We cannot say yet how the university will uh, do it in the future. They, 
it looks as a hybrid uh, if from the internet what i know now it looks as it will be hybrid from uh, august september but it might also be that it goes faster and that a lot of uh, things will take place on campus again um, but we do are not the experts on that please follow the website and the information channels of the two education institutions themselves for that topic uh, or do you want to add something on light life on COVID? i think it will change in the next two three months a lot yeah yeah you'll find out say, during intro week when we give this again and we'll say this is what we're dealing with i think yeah. it is going to get better so yeah, yeah. I, I would say though like if anyone does like i can totally understand if COVID is a big concern or is something that's making some people anxious with coming here making friends so if you do want to shoot me an email and like i can tell you about my personal experience if it's something that will set your mind at ease obviously feel free yeah. to contact us Likewise. Uh, yeah things things will be changing so yeah. can't give any concrete details maybe another good question though is the nightlife in Maastricht is not as focused on clubbing right but are there some yes uh, clubbing they're not like I a don't large know anymore after one year of <laughs> I don't even know what clubbing club. is <laughs> Um, yes, they are clubs here. Um, they're they're club. not like we have one big club, which is like, Jesus, I almost forgot the name complex. complex. It's been that long. <laughs> <laughs> used to be my home. Now I'm like, what is the name? Not my home. But so that's like one big one. But there are also some like relatively for Maastricht size, still big clubs. And then there are also small ones. So it is possible that you will find yourself in a club after a night out <laughs> um but house parties are also a thing here um yeah. there's a mix like yeah. you can still have a really good night club life even if it's not that big a club yeah i would say though in general the north is more known for its big nightlife scene big club party scene mm -hmm. more than the south um but i do know also that people go like for example, to Cologne, which is not too far. If they do, mm -hmm. like, if there's like a big party in Cologne, they'll go there. Um, if Brussels, maybe. Yeah. So people do go out. Like, it's relatively close, like an hour or so away. So yeah. obviously, COVID has made everything different, right? But um, yeah. also has a very nice uh, music event venue, which had just opened before Corona. So there are lots of like performances taking place and lots of parties. Mm -hmm. And um, I can only agree with what Franz says, uh, Cologne, but also Aachen, which is very close, half an hour, has some nice uh, nightclubs. But let's see how COVID develops and uh, what what is possible again. Yeah. Um, I don't see any final questions. Uh, you have two more minutes or so. If you still have something urgent on your mind you want to uh, ask. Um, Oh yeah, maybe that's a, actually a good one. The student public transport card. I we tackled it briefly about a wee chip card. What you what you recommend on it, and what are the big advantages? So yeah, I just saw there you asked that you can get them for free on weekends or weekdays. This just to uh, get out the way, you can only do this if you have like the student finance package then you can get um the student transport deal kind of on that and then you can choose whether to travel for free on either weekends or weekdays and that whichever one you don't choose you get a discount but only if you have that subsidy um and otherwise if you do have the ov chip card which is the transport card we're talking about i would recommend like I said earlier, that you get it because it is cheaper than paying the cash or bank card price. But also you can also sometimes load discounts on it if there's um, NS, let's say is the train like company, if they're having some sort of like deal, then you can load that onto your um, OVA chip card and you can travel for cheaper. Or if you can find a group of people to travel with, you can then get a discount um, sometimes not happening now with corona i think but assuming mm. everything goes well it will be back so i would always recommend getting that you save so much money yeah 
Then we have two more uh, final questions. And the one is, uh, do students live in Belgium as it is very close? And in EAF, yes, how does it affect the visa process? Uh, we recently had a question about this. So yes, a lot of students actually do live across the border in Belgium, but fear not, Belgium is literally 15 minutes away by bike. Um, so it's it's basically like almost like living in the Netherlands uh, in terms of distance from the city. Um, visa wise i believe that you need to apply a visa for the country that you're going to be living in yeah um so it's I'm not the same thing in that sense so if you're studying in the netherlands i think you cannot live in belgium unfortunately so which though is for people who are registered in the eu or come from the eu is a viable option because it's about uh, depending where it is 10 to 15 minutes bike ride to your faculty yeah i think but we had this question, Fran, and it was possible for a specific amount of time. Yeah. Um, but but again, in... the visa. Sorry. Of, sorry. But again, the visa office will handle your visa in the first place. So usually, people with visas, their housing is like settled a lot quicker than yeah. those without. Yeah. If you're not from the EU, it will not be as easy for you to live in Belgium, um, mm -hmm. if that's what you're looking for. Yeah because the visa is connected or to your country of residence that you are studying out to. It's yes. a study visa. Although yeah. I think you can use that visa to be outside, like you said, Amanda, for 90 days in a different yeah. country. And uh, rental contracts are not really negotiable, but you should definitely check them. And then uh, it's possible to, of course, ask for certain things that are not explicitly mentioned in rental contracts. Uh, final question, I think, is what cities is the Maastricht airport connected to usually? Mm, they're like very niche like places because I've checked like I know sometimes Malta is there. So it's not as big an airport. It's actually called Maastricht Aachen um, airport. And I wouldn't say a lot of the big cities or main cities. It's usually like the touristy kind of cities, countries at least. So yeah. think like south, south of Italy or like yeah that yeah. sort of thing. The Big bigger Marshall. airports around are more like Cologne, Düsseldorf, uh, Brussels, Amsterdam. Yeah, uh, and those are still within like reach. Like Eindhoven is an yeah. hour and a bit away. Yeah. With okay. that, I think we answered all the questions. Uh, yeah. Thanks everybody to for joining. The webinar will be live on YouTube and we post it to Facebook to this event. Um, I think that is in two days. Um, thank you for joining again and for all your questions. I hope you uh, got some valuable information from it. Once again, the main important thing about for reparations now, finding a good housing, looking early enough, checking if your health insurance is eligible for here and then register with the municipality and looking around your neighborhood for orientation. Um, with that, do you have anything to add, Amanda or Fran? No, thanks for coming, guys. Contact us. Thanks, you Federica. Thanks, Anik, for joining and helping. And you. Uh, maybe you see you in Maastricht and don't hesitate to contact us via email, WhatsApp, or social media. Oh. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody.